Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Novage webinar. Uh, why upgrade to Vectorworks Spotlight 2018? It's never been a more exciting time in the entertainment industry. From workflow enhancement, multi-view support, and brand new tool functions, Vectorworks Spotlight 2018 continues to blur the boundary between fun and engaging 3D digital design and professional real-world application as well. This webinar will review and demonstrate a handful of new tools and features available in Vectorworks Spotlight 2018. Today's webinar presenter, Jacob Dale, is a global training specialist and the founder of Tangibly.com, a consultancy and resource to designers creating for the physical world. Jacob bridges two decades of industry experience and dual professional degrees in entertainment design and architecture. He has been using Vectorworks as an, as an essential 3D design, CAD, and rendering tool since the 20th century. Long, long time. Jacob has served as a training consultant to professionals ranging from major motion picture set designers and live entertainment lightning designers to leading architectural firms. And now let me tell you a little bit of Novage and where you can find Vectorworks Spotlight. Novage is one of the largest online stores for design software. We offer a huge assortment of software solutions that don't stop just to factor or stop uh, spotlight, but they range to you know um, different uh, design software solutions. So visit Novage at Novage.com. And for more daily software news and limited time promotions, pay a visit to the Novage blog or follow us on. Um, Facebook, Google Plus, or Twitter. Coming up in two weeks, V Rays for SketchUp. Don't miss it. And uh, last but not least, today's webinar will be recorded. And if you want to rewatch it, just visit us on uh, the Novag YouTube or Vimeo channels. And now, without further ado, I'm going to share um, Jacob's screen and let him do all the talk and the demoing. Thank you, Barbara. What a great introduction. It really is a true pleasure to meet all of you folks from all the way around the world. And uh, just like to say that uh, with the power of Vectorworks Spotlight, um, it's really provided huge opportunity in the last couple decades in my profession. And, you know, I got my first start with this software way back in theater design school, uh, learning how to uh, create light plots and uh, really just getting started with 3D design at that time, and it sure has evolved a lot over the years. Um, being around the world and actually on a uh, around the world journey right now, meeting Spotlight users all the way um, around this awesome planet, it's really great to connect with everybody online, a little bit easier logistically, but it's also been great to see some friendly faces uh, in many different countries um, as we, uh, mentioned before we got started and probably before the recording so for some of you folks on the replay um, Barbara and I discussed the fact that I'm actually in the southern hemisphere right now so enjoying a little bit of warmth and uh, having one year to escape the uh, the northern hemisphere in the holidays so it's nice and warm here and I just wanted just kind of related to that uh, been doing a lot of traveling lately as I normally do domestically but been getting on a lot of airplanes and just a little travel tip for you folks as we are entering the, the mad rush for the holiday season. Take your time, breathe, enjoy the moment, and make sure that you have your eye on all your belongings. I've been really good about this for many years as I've been on planes for a handful of years, getting tangibly up and off the ground. And uh, was in an airport in Cyprus recently, and you know how they stack the security bins on top of each other when they're kind of rushing you through security and it always feels like you know just a scramble to try to get through that metal detector as quickly as possible well i was in a hurry to uh, get on and get a breakfast sandwich on the way to egypt and well one of the security bins got stacked on top of my laptop so um, i know a lot of you folks really depend on taking your personal computer maybe to uh, your family for holiday or you know for a business trip related to your travels keep your eye on your things so good tech tip good travel tip to keep in mind uh, you don't want to go through the uh, the 
the dips and dives of international uh, courier exchange and the customs charges that are involved with that. So luckily, every, all of my belongings got back to me thanks to a very friendly um, good Samaritan in the community, saw my computer and returned it to lost and found. So again, keep your eye out in case anybody else is flustered and keep calm, travel well and be safe. So let's get started here. Just wanted to show you a new face to the Tangibly website. We have been working hard to refresh and refine the access to our services as we always do, but we're really excited about entering 2018 as we're entering the fourth year of business, we really wanted to make a big effort toward uh, making these services available to you online and in person, however it might be. So one of those things to consider on our website there is the user groups. Uh, we have been running user groups between New York, San Francisco, and the LA Santa Monica region for a few years now, and lots of great folks there. If you want to join one of our user groups, you can uh, pick your vertical of software that you use and you just go in there and pick the, if you happen to be in one of these regions, you can join us. We do have some online sessions. So even if you aren't in those regions, feel free to join us. If you are looking to get on our mailing list, you can hop on to our contact button there and just sign up down here. We'll let you know when we're in your region or online near you. Maybe when the next Novec webinar is coming up, of course, because we always love doing these. And one more thing, if you're just in a pinch and you need some skills, you can always tap on coaching and you can book our time right here. Pretty simple, you just pick a time. These times are skewed a little bit because like I said, I'm in a different time zone right now. But just hope that uh, a lot of these new features will help you out. And we do have some new features coming up real soon in 2018. If you wanna know about that, again, get on our mailing list and we'll be sending out some updates here over the holidays. So uh, some treats coming forward. So we're really excited about uh, today's webinar about uh, what's new in Vectorworks Spotlight 2018. There's a lot of updates that we got to dig into at the recent design summit in Baltimore, which I had the distinct pleasure of meeting Barbara in person. And uh, it was a pleasure after all these years of talking remotely and online. Like I said, it's always nice to meet folks in person face to face when we have the opportunity. So we got to talk about a lot of the updates to 2018. And really we're talking about why upgrade to 2018 Spotlight today. And a lot of that has to do with time and efficiency. As always, that's usually our, uh, our discussion is how to save time, how to insert some efficiency into your workflow. And a lot of the updates that we're seeing in 2018 are directly related to that. Now we're gonna pick out a handful of these and cover them a little bit more in depth today, but I just wanted to run through the list real quick that multiple drawing views, if you have not had the opportunity to check these out yet, really great feature in Vectorworks 2018. We're gonna look a little bit deeper into that today. Uh, live section and elevation editing. That's a really neat feature that a lot of us have been asking for for a while and they just kind of surprised us with that this year. That's really exciting. We're gonna look into that as well. Enhanced Resource Manager. Now the Resource Manager is what was formerly referred to as the Resource Browser, which we had, um, I guess the name changed back in 2015, but even more robust now, they've added a, a few more shortcuts and links there to the uh, Resource Manager. So that's really helpful for your workflow. We'll talk about that as well today. Streamlined Report Generation. Now, if you are involved in event production, you know there are a lot of moving parts involved with load in and load out, and a lot of folks to keep on, on board with, uh, with that inventory. So we're gonna talk about ways to output reports from your design model. Enhanced seating section command. Now that's a very popular tool as well with a lot of event planners and designers. So we're gonna look at ways that they've streamlined, Vectorworks has streamlined the seating section command for this year. Now, some other features that are in Vectorworks Spotlight 2018 that have been talked about a lot recently include easier title block customization. They've totally revamped from the ground up the title block uh, tool. So we're not gonna have a chance to talk about that today. So we're gonna talk about the top five there the top, but the other things to include, updates to Max on Center Render, there's new rendering options available, 
They're always improving, uh, bringing on the Maxon rendering engine into Vectorworks Spotlight. So really great way to present your designs to your clients. Enhanced web view export. So if you're looking to share 3D models of your design with your clients, you can actually export those to WebView. We saw that first last year and they've made some great improvements to that. So be on the lookout for some updates there. New rendered panoramas, another great way to display your design. Braceworks is an all new plugin, especially for those that are interested in rigging. Uh, if you're gonna be uh, suspending any type of loads from an event space, uh, Braceworks is a really great new plugin. Pretty robust and uh, great for those that are specializing in the rigging practices. Um, improved cloud services. Vectorworks has completely revamped their cloud services portal, integrated it with some uh, some of the cloud hosting platforms. Like uh, there, there's a uh, the name escapes me at the moment, but of course Box, Dropbox, and okay, Google Drive. That's the one that was out of my head for a moment. So improved cloud services now. Up, updates to Vectorworks Vision as well. So Vectorworks acquired Vision a couple of years ago, a great way to do some pre-visualization and they've streamlined that connection between the two as well. There's a lot more updates to 2018 and we always see a long, long list of updates. Many of them don't get featured in the videos you'll see on YouTube or on, um, especially on Novich website. And we don't always get a chance to cover it, but a lot of it is really the back-end efficiency of the program. More robust, more stable, less crashes. That's really what we're always looking for. So um, I can honestly say that 2018 has been a great update. So we're gonna move on to multiple drawing views, and I'm gonna go on to the next screen here. So in multiple drawing views, that's a feature that a lot of folks that are familiar with Rhinoceros 3D and uh, Revit will be pretty familiar with. Uh, it's been available in those software platforms for quite a while now. And basically what you're able to do with multiple drawing views is display your, your design in multiple interactive windows. So rather than just what we see here on the left-hand side, our uh, typical drawing window that we use in Vectorworks, we have the ability to split that into several different drawing windows and see our design from different angles. So we could see a, you know, a plan like we see on the left and a section on the right. Now we're in a uh, sheet design layer right now, so uh, not to be confused. In fact, we could go back to uh, the design model here and we'll see we'd have the ability to split the screen. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, these are not to be confused with viewports. Now, we've had viewports for really uh, most of the time we've ever been using Vectorworks. Uh, viewports are really powerful for displaying like we just had there on this one sheet in this example file. This is uh, These are two viewports displaying our design model with all of their class and layer uh, visibilities involved. But the nice thing about the uh, multiple drawing views is that we have the ability to look at our model and also edit it through these multiple views. And so we could look at a really quick way of grabbing that multi-view right here. And that is simply in an icon shortcut that is at the uh, toolbar, the very top of your workspace. And just by tapping that one icon, we have the ability to split that view. And as you'll see, we have independent view panes where we can see our design model. And we have a small corporate event space that is modeled here. And we're able to look at that from an isometric view and from a, uh, what is an elevation view. So we do have the building geometry, it's it's on a grayed out design layer. So we're able to see through that right now in this elevation view, but we do have the ability to snap. So that's one thing to notice for sure that our cursor is showing all snapping behavior because we actually have all drawing and editing behavior in all of these views that we're seeing here. Now, if you are looking to uh, maybe maximize one of these views as compared to the others, you can always grab the, um, the divider bar here. So it's similar to moving your palettes around, but we can move that um, divider bar there. And maybe we just wanna see a thumbnail view of our plan, our top plan view, and adjust 
these other views to uh, better display what our design is. Now, all of these are independently uh, movable, so we can grab those divider lines and mix and match and make a mosaic of views if we want to. Nice thing is that these um, divider bars do seem to have a snapping behavior. So you notice that it kind of jumps over and snaps there. So if you're kind of the uh, very organized, uh, meticulous person that uh, similar to my workflow, uh, you're always looking to organize your, your desk and your desktop uh, relatedly. So if you've been putting off a third monitor uh, purchase for a while, and we know it's just before the holidays, maybe a last minute purchase, uh, maybe the capital capital expenditure for your office or your whole studio, get that second monitor, third monitor, uh, maybe go kind of wild with uh, with your desktop. Uh, I currently limit myself to 15 inch screen because I'm on the road a lot, but I really do, uh, I look forward to plugging in at the hotel to that you know, 60 inch monitor that they usually have there on the wall. Always bring your HDMI cable wherever you go, especially if you're traveling with a laptop. But if you plug into that, Say if you're in the office, you have the ability to output one of these panes to, uh, if you right click on one of these, and so we're just right clicking on the header here with the, with the title of the view pane. What you wanna do is just right click and then go to the contextual menu where it says create floating view pane. Now the great thing about this floating view pane, now I can only show you on one screen because I'm presenting to you today so you can see all of my screen. But if I had an external monitor, I could simply just drag this window out to that other monitor and we'll, we'll do that by, let's see here, I could probably put it, well, I'm using the split screen currently. So normally I could just put it on a different desktop if you're on a Mac operating system and I believe Windows has a similar set up as well. But yeah, we can uh, place that floating window on any monitor we want. So let's say, for example, you're working with a whole studio or team atmosphere, or maybe you're wanting to display a certain view like this isometric view, for example, um, to your client when they come visit the office. Now you could have folks working on their workstations, or you could even be working on your workstation in the background, and this external view or this um, floating view pane could actually be maximized on an external screen. So it's a nice way to kind of display the uh, up to the minute status of the project. So we'll look a little bit deeper at this project um, on one of the next features. Okay, so uh, maybe you want a you know, want a quick way of displaying these all of these view panes, but you don't necessarily want to always have them up. As you notice, it really chops up my workspace, especially on this laptop. So if you keep in mind, here's a little shortcut for you, the letter M, just the letter M on your keyboard, no modifiers or anything, just letter M. If you tap that, that's basically your toggle button to uh, switch between multi-view and your um, single view pane. So a little tip for you there. So, yep, if you see there on the right-hand side, there's a, there's a couple of ideas. If you are um, maybe getting some big ideas like we are, you know, there's some really nice curved monitors out there right now if you're looking to splurge a little bit. And definitely did see some uh, pretty impressive curved monitor displays uh, when I was in Dubai recently. So um, lots of fun, uh, fun ways to explore the digital world now and with multi-views and floating view panes with Vectorworks 2018 uh, Spotlight, you have the, an unlimited ability to display your designs. So I'm just gonna scroll through some of these tips here, just make sure we covered all of them. So uh, one thing to remember here, this helpful tip, you can begin an action in one view pane and end it in another. So I'll show you what that looks like. So if we were to, let's say for example, if we wanted to move this, uh, this soft good here, so I have that suspended from the ceiling there. If I wanted to move that, I did select it in one of my view panes. I can move to the other view pane. So I'm just clicking on the header there and that activates that view pane. And then I can continue to just move that object over. And you'll notice that it updates in all view panes live. But you know, if you're going to draw, let's say a polygon or create some 3D object or um, like I did, 
uh, move that object. I just uh, undid that action there to put everything back in place. But if you were to do any action that you would do in a single view pane, you have the same ability to do that in multi view panes. So a really cool feature there and a good tip to know. So if you want to dig a little bit deeper into your view pane options, the shortcut there is to, you go to view and go down to multiple view panes. This is a new menu item. And you have the ability to manipulate those view panes. Notice how I have this, this view pane theater floor plan is active currently. I have the ability to split that view pane horizontally or vertically. So I can split that vertically. There's some options in there that you can uh, you can play with to find the exact settings that you prefer. Now there's also the contextual click on the header and we can split those horizontally there uh, just next to the create floating view pane. Something to keep in mind is that the default that I had in Spotlight when I opened it up was that all of the view panes use the same visibilities in all panes. Well, here's that little checkbox there. So if that checkbox is, or that little check is next to use same visibilities, that means every single one of your view panes, including the floating view pane that might be on that external monitor of yours, is going to share all the same visibilities. So if I go and change my visibilities, currently I'm on OpenGL, but if let's say, for example, I wanted to go to a wireframe in that active, and of course, the shortcut always pops up, you can disable it, of course, but if we go to our other views, well, technically we're supposed to be seeing that in wireframe. So let's check again, use same visibilities in all panes. So maybe that, maybe I'm wrong there. Maybe that's, that doesn't refer to render mode. Uh, that may just be visibility. So if we go to our visibility controls like classes or uh, design layers, for example, then that is probably what we're looking at. So if we turn off the building, for example, in one view pane, it will turn off in all view panes. So correcting course a little bit there. It's always nice to find uh, little trips like that in our webinars because it does teach us a few lessons of what not to do and what the software actually will do for you. So don't make assumptions, definitely get in there and tinker with the software and try to break it if you can. So we will, now we'll test the, the visibilities by turning off uh, the unifying visibilities just by right clicking there. Now that is gonna be a setting that's the same across all view panes, no matter how many you have open. I accidentally clicked um, enable single view pane there. But just to confirm, the same visibilities in all places is actually, or all panes is actually turned off currently. And so now what we'll do is uh, turn off a design layer in that particular view pane. So I turned off the, uh, the building and then let's turn off the, we'll make the light plot current and turn off the theater floor plan. You'll see that there's no, there's no information in this view pane currently, but we see it in all of our other view panes. Now this would be helpful if I had a light plot or some light positions here. So we would see the lights there. Maybe you're just looking to remove the building geometry in one of these views, but still how, see how it relates to your other design layers and other views. So a uh, really nice way to use your, your view panes. Now notice when I turn off the multi-view pane or toggle it off with this uh, shortcut up here or the letter M on my keyboard, the active view pane becomes the single view pane if you turn off multi-view panes. So if I wanted to actually see some geometry, I could either turn back on these design layers or activate the other one just by clicking on the header there, tap the M on my keyboard, and then I've automatically gone to an isometric view. So we've covered everything here. Let's move on to our next topic. So that is live section and elevation editing. So we've been able to cut sections and show elevations for a while. Uh, just last year, I believe, we got the ability to do interior elevation viewports, which is really great. You can create an interior elevation marker on your plan and it'll show a bunch of interior elevations. So this would apply if you have, let's say, for example, a lot of um, 
a lot of advertising copy or uh, you know marketing copy for your client uh, that are that needs to be displayed on the interior of your event space maybe uh, monitors that are showing their logo or uh, the beginning of their presentation you want to make sure that that is appealing to the client before you go for the load in or you before they sign the check uh, the interior elevation viewport would be a great way to display that but what if you needed to tweak anything in those viewports same goes for elevations etc so if we're going to go to let's go to one of the sheets here it looks like I have a crash so bear with me while I pull this back up Barbara if you want to interject for a moment and maybe uh, do a little promotion sure <laughs> That's wonderful. Thanks for um, giving me the opportunity. Um, yeah, so you know there's a promotion going on right now for all the Vectorworks product, including Spotlight. You can get a 25% off uh, on a series of um, product on our catalog. So check out Novage.com and uh, you can go on to the Vectorworks uh, brand page and you can uh, see all the products that um, have this special. So um, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to you all. <laughs> and uh, That's a good plug, Barbara. Yeah, yes. <laughs> um, I was, I was uh, feeling like that, that is actually an, a great email when I saw that the other day. Is upgrading, oh. upgrading your assets in your office is just going to make you more efficient and, and Make, maybe make your uh, your teammates happier because you're going to be uh, using everything that's new and sparkly in the new year. They'll be grateful. Best uh, present in the stockings. <laughs> so we have um, we have our Vectorworks backup, and I would like to say that that's likely due to the fact that I'm using split screen and not because of Vectorworks. But of course, some of y'all are going to say, "Oh, well, Vectorworks crashes." The reality is, all software crashes at some point. And uh, again, working from a laptop, we would probably expect those a little bit more often than usual. So uh, we'll do our best to get back on board here. And here we are. So multiple drawing views, and then we want to move on to live section and elevation editing. So how do we do it? Live section and elevation editing is really just a couple clicks away if you have a floor plan on one of your sheets with a section cut through it well we know that we have the dynamic sections now where if we cut a section through the plan we have a section that is actually related to that section line which is a great way to auto coordinate um, your viewports across vectors well one of the uh, easiest ways to get in there and edit your section let's say for example we wanted to move our uh, stage forward or maybe move that uh, those soft goods a little bit in this corporate event space rather than going back to our design model we can actually edit this section directly so if we right click on that viewport we can just go down and select edit section in place that contextual click takes us into the section might take a second here and just a little disclaimer, I am displaying a lot of geometry with the seating section tool here. So uh, that is why it takes a little bit of time to get into that section. So if you are familiar with editing sections, this looks very similar. Going into the section viewport, we see this orange border around that shows that we are editing the section for sure. But the difference here is now you have the ability to use the flyover tool. So if we hit shift C on the keyboard, we activate the flyover tool, or we can always just tap it there on the basic tool palette. And if you just click and rotate, you'll see now the power of the edit section in place. This also works in elevation, interior elevations as well. So the value here is that you, you don't change your, your section in any way. You don't have to go back to your model. You don't have to use a clip cube to go in and access the section of the model, if you're just looking to move these particular objects, you have all the edit capabilities within the section that you do within the design layer. So if I selected this, uh, this soft good, and let's say we wanted to move that, move that object, we can simply just drag it 
and move it within the model. So if we return back to the viewport, just by tapping that button up there, then we'll see that the geometry has moved in the section. So really quick way to um, edit your sections, edit your model directly. Maybe you're outputting a stack of documents and you're about to plot and you notice that something just needs to be tweaked pretty quickly. Great way to just get into the viewport and edit that information and move forward. So a helpful tip is that you can actually double click on the section or elevation viewport. So again, we have this section viewport here. And this is the edit dialog. So um, same options here as if you were to right click, but that contextual menu that you get on the right click is gonna give you a lot more options that you may not be interested in sifting through every time you want to go and edit a section or an elevation. So what I commonly do is just double click on that viewport and you get kind of this contained uh, selection of um, edit functions. So of course, annotation, the crop and the design layer, but now they've added this radio button for editing the section in place. So if you select that radio button, then of course we go back into the section just like we were previously. But I'm going to just quickly exit this again and show that the um, what I'm talking about just a little bit further below is that double clicking access into this edit viewport dialog. You'll notice that Vectorworks remembers your previous selection. So before the, the radio button was not on section in, in place, but it is currently. So if you were to go click on another section or elevation viewport, it would default to this, uh, to this selection. So the nice thing is if you're trying to save a little bit of time, shave a few minutes off your day or a few hours off your week, et cetera, that compounds, of course. If you just double click using the um, edit viewport dialog, it's going to remember your last selection. So basically I could double click and hit enter and it's going to take me right back into uh, that same edit function. So saving you a little bit of time and maybe uh, making your day a little bit easier. So just little things like that will add up for sure. So the uh, another thing to remember is that edit, edit selection or elevation is a 3D view. So therefore all your standard views are going to be available except for your 2D top plan. So you can use all of your standard. So let's just enter this one more time and I'll display that. So waiting for that to open. Okay. And if we select any of these other views, rather than using the flyover tool, we have the ability to navigate through the model just as we uh, would if we were in a design layer. So that's a, a really nice way to navigate, but it's not going to let me uh, go to top plan because this is a 3D view, it's not a 2D view. So another helpful tip is that right here at the bottom of the, uh, of the standard views, you have the ability to go back to the viewport view when you created your section viewport. Let's say you got into just a really strange 3D view or just looking for a shortcut to get back. You don't have to get back to the flyover tool and try to reorient this um, to see what your section looked like. Of course, you can always exit your, your viewport and then uh, all the settings of your section will go back to the same. But another shortcut here is the viewport view. So if we just tap on that, it will reorient your 3D objects back to the view that was in your section. Um, so again, just here, the note at the bottom, it is not necessary to restore the viewport view uh, this way. It's just a quick tip if you want to stay within this view. As you've noticed, it takes a little bit of time for my computer to render that section viewport. Then uh, if you were to just want to navigate around this quickly, uh, you have the ability to just simply exit the uh, by clicking return to viewport and you'll notice that the section uh, remains the same. So you don't always have to reorient back to it. It's a really great feature. Uh, try it out if you're doing a lot of interior elevations. Sections are especially great. If we had some light positions up here, uh, maybe you wanted to move um, some of your positions vertically or um, to or, or from the front of house, then you have the ability to do that as well right there from the section. So great, powerful tool. So let's move on and spend a little bit too much time on this. Got some other goodies to talk about. 
Um, so the re Enhanced Resource Manager. So the Resource Manager was a great tool when it came out just uh, two years ago, uh, an improvement on the Resource Browser. So if we open our Resource Manager here, uh, we'll see currently I'm displaying some Entourage. I was using some Entourage in a project recently. And uh, for some reason, my default uh, shows that these, uh, these views here are a little bit um, condensed, I, I would say. So you just grab these vertical bars and move them out so you can see your uh, directory here on the left and then your previews here on the right. So if you open your resource manager and you are seeing something similar to what just displayed on my screen, just try that out to readjust. So if I save this file now, it should probably save those defaults. So let's let's take a look at what's new here in the resource manager. Now these are gonna be the same across all of the platforms of Vectorworks, but we're specifically talking about Spotlight today, so we'll stay focused on that. Well, one of those in uh, is similar to what is similarly referred to as the file path. So if you have been using the resource manager a lot in the last couple of years, you'll notice that this is new right here. It is a way to contextually navigate all of the resource that are, resources that are available to you. Yes, they're all available here in this drop-down list here on the left-hand side, but let's say, for example, you were going for a more condensed workflow and that, that little guy was uh, closed or we had all these collapsed then you have the ability to navigate those same directories. And maybe you're looking for, rather than an outline of Entourage, you're looking for abstract 2Ds, or you wanna back up to the Entourage and maybe move on to plants or um, some type of uh, Entourage vehicles for your event. Then you have the ability to do that from right up here at the top. Really great shortcut uh, for your workflow. So I've, I've actually found myself uh, finding my resources a lot quicker using this then going through all these drop downs and trying to find uh, in these folders how these uh, different objects relate to each other so maybe six and one half dozen there but you know that the great thing is there's several different ways to get there and uh, a lot of efficiencies if you get comfortable with those these workflows so a couple buttons that are new up top is definitely the up one level. So right now we're in outline figures and if I just click up one level, then we go to see filled figures and outline figures as well. So another way to navigate through all of your resources. And then if you just click on the home button, that's gonna take us back to our open file, which is referred to as home in this directory here. So if we just hit that little house, we go to the open file. This is helpful if you have multiple files open, which I don't right now. Uh, but if you saw multiple tabs here and have multiple files open and you would also have access to those multiple open files underneath this directory. So uh, great way to get back to just, just the, um, the file that you're currently in is by clicking that little home icon there, a nice shortcut. And we can see that a couple of elements are parked here in this file, um, some of the seating elements. And we'll talk about those here in a minute. So another great feature of the, uh, the updated resource manager is the uh, new Boolean search options. And what is Boolean search? Uh, that is basically, you may be familiar with this even in a Google search world, is that you can use uh, terms like and or not. So I should add not there. Um, but the, the fact of uh, searching is that oftentimes you end up with more results than you're really looking for. So by using uh, Boolean search um, omitters or um, additives, you have the ability to add or subtract uh, certain things. So let's say, for example, we're looking for uh, vehicles. So I could type in vehicles in the search bar. So the search bar has been here uh, for a couple of years now, but they have streamlined a little bit of the coding in the background. So um, this does move a lot faster. So I could type in vehicles and the uh, it looks like we ended up with a couple vehicles, uh, but I'm just looking in symbols and plug-in objects right now. Actually, if we click on this little search icon here, we have the ability to set where it's looking for uh, looking for those objects. So if I said vehicles and um, cloth, for example, maybe I'm looking for cloth. Okay, that particular uh, search didn't didn't produce many results, 
but let's say that I'm I want to take a look at furniture so I could search furniture we have loads of furniture that we can place in our event space well, let's say I'm doing an outdoor event we do see a lot of outdoor furniture here but I'm also seeing sanitary fixtures and I, I could either omit I could say furniture not not sanitary and it would omit if I hit enter there, it omits those uh, sanitary fixtures. And I could also say and, and type in outdoor here. So if I'm only looking for an outdoor venue, outdoor furniture, then I can make that search query with the Boolean search option. And I have that ability to refine my search and go more directly toward the objects that I want. Now, this isn't limited to just two different Boolean options. We can actually say not wood. So if we don't want any of these wood objects here, maybe it's a client specificity there. So not wood, it removes most of the objects that refer to wood in their description or within their, their ID tag. So yeah, there's the ability to use multiple uh, Boolean search. You can use and, not, or, uh, a whole variety of terms, and they do have to be capitalized. That's something to uh, keep in mind when you are using Boolean search within your resource manager. Great way to go find resources, really efficient, and speaking about efficiency, we should move on from this topic. But go in, take a look, explore it. So streamline report generation. If you are involved in events, you produce a lot of reports, or at least a lot of folks ask for reports. Usually that looks like a spreadsheet of all of your information that is contained within your design that is gonna need to be loaded in, maybe from a big truck and maybe loaded back into a big truck or home multiple of trucks for delivery. Uh, so you wanna be really accurate when you're communicating with the venue space and all the folks involved, they're gonna be touching all those goods where do you get that inventory list? Great thing about Spotlight is that it keeps track of all this information in the background. So if you look at the floor plan that we have here, um, I have a, a seating plan that's showing some regular stacking chairs and then also some uh, sofa configurations. Now this is for more of a casual event, as you might recognize, but if I needed to get a seat count or a furniture count from this, and especially if I had some uh, light fixtures up here and maybe some, some scenic elements, whatever they be, um, I want a quick report generated to get that, um, to the, get that information up. So just a disclaimer here, if you are not using Vectorworks design series, which is the top level of the software, you may not have access to all of these features. So just keep that in mind. And uh, just bear with us if you haven't upgraded to the design level. So that's one step above Spotlight. You basically get all the features of Vectorworks across all platforms and some really nice features in report generation. So if I wanted to create a report, so we would go up here to the Spotlight menu and go to reports. And you may be familiar with generating paperwork, lighting inventory setup, lighting symbol maintenance, you know, these variety of things is probably part of your workflow if you use Spotlight pretty often. But we want to look at create report because this is where some of the updates have been um, inserted into 2018. Now, of course, we have the ability to create a custom report. A lot of this dialogue has been streamlined. So we have the ability to create uh, reports with any of these variables here on the left hand side. Uh, but what I want to call your attention to is the pre-formatted reports. So you'll have to go up to the uh, type dropdown and select pre-formatted reports. And we'll see a whole list of reports that are totally unrelated to Spotlight. So unfortunately, the pre-formatted reports are not oriented to automatically show you Spotlight specific reports. But I have a little trick here. So if you were to click on the header that says schedules. So first, it, the first click actually just activates the fact that you can click on it. The second click is going to revert the order. So rather than doing an A to Z 
sort, we're doing a Z to A sort, and what we'll see here is all of our spotlight specific inventory reports, instrument schedules, uh, color schedules, color cut list, all of the things you're probably familiar with needing from your model, here they are right here and nice and convenient. So a little tip there if you want to save a little bit of time and let's say we were back in here and having to scroll all the way down and then find our reports. I know it's not a lot of mileage, but sometimes when you just learn these quick tips, it'll save you a little bit of time in your day, maybe a little bit longer lunch break. Don't tell anybody who said that. So another tip when you are creating these reports, if you want that placed directly on your drawing, you can select this box here, but even when you create the report, it's going to be placed in your resource manager. So it will always be available to you and it will open with a, with a, uh, a preview. So we're going to pick one without images so that it loads faster. And there's the report. We don't have a lot of information in this document, so um, it's, it's not showing any of the information here. So really great way to create reports, uh, fast, pre-baked, pre-formatted reports, quick and easy to the Spotlight user that may have the design series of the software. So moving on to our last topic, I know we're kind of running short on time because I dove a little bit deeper into these than I probably should have, but it is the enhanced seating section command. Now the enhanced seating section command is a really great tool. Most folks in the event space are concerned about the number one thing and that is attendance and where are the attendees going to sit we need to figure that out we need to see how many people we can get in seats for our event and even if it's just a basic seat count for our event it's a really important thing to figure out well the seating section command has been improved in 2018 to streamline the process you'll see here that i've got a uh, seating layout that I've created and you may notice if you created a lot of seating layouts that I have multiple different types of seats in here so we'll talk a little bit about that uh, we have the ability to use more than one symbol in a seating section so these this is referred to the seating section tool so how do we use it well if we select a polygon which I've already created a polygon here simple polygon no tricks up my sleeve but if we go to our event design menu and create seating section then we get exposed to all of the beautiful new features of the seating section tool. So of course the first action is that you need to pick a focus point. We're familiar with that. And as that pop-up reminded me, of course, and I'm just using that crosshair to pick a focus point there on the stage. And what we'll see here in the initial dialog of seating section settings is looks a little bit busy. And just one thing, Thing to keep in mind if you do see something that looks a bit crazy like this just look down here this is a shortcut into your resource manager and uh, given that I've used this light fixture in the past it's defaulting to this light fixture and I was just working on ways to use a seating section command to disperse objects so keep that in mind you can actually uh, put any type of symbol within this um, within this tool so it doesn't only have to be seating even though it's name seating you have the ability to place a bunch of objects uh, within a certain order but what we're more concer concerned with right now is seating of course so we're going to look at seat symbols so when we click on that little button it basically opens a, a miniature version of the resource manager we can select seating symbols and let's select a different type of seat than we had in the other venue next door so just going to double click on that symbol there and then we'll see this preview pane this preview pane is new to the seating section command and the nice thing about this preview pane is it allows us to kind of get an idea of the layout before we go back to our design layer that saves us a little bit of time because loading this command and going back and re-rendering the the model within the design layer um, it requires some processing time. So rather than take a coffee break just yet, we're just gonna make sure that this layout is the way that we want it. So one thing that we can start with is changing the seating spacing. So I'm just gonna make it real simple and just do 20 inches between the two row and seat spacing. And we'll see now that these little uh, locus points 
and uh, perimeters are representing where the seats are going to go. So this is just a uh, it's it's a quick a quick view. But if you click this little checkbox down here, then you have a better sense of those objects in their orientation. So um, again, you can you can edit the row spacing. So let's bring that down to maybe 16 inches and then change the seat spacing to maybe 12. Um, so it brings them a little bit closer together. Uh, you have the ability to change their distance measurement. There's a lot of options in here we're not gonna take the time to look at, but the definitely get in there and check out the options uh, when you get your software license for 2018. Now, another thing, other than just changing the symbol here, we can add multiple symbols. So this is really powerful if you're looking to Maybe it's a uh, dinner theater type show and they're looking for um, side tables or uh, tables to go every other seat or every few seats. You can add another symbol to this list. So that's how you do it first is you have to add a second symbol and then we would choose the seating type. Now I could go look for a little table, a planter, um, a sofa, for example, like I had in the other seating layout that you saw there in the plan. But what we can do really, really quick is just add some folding chairs in there. So uh, maybe not the most elegant resource, but uh, sometimes you gotta just get as many seats in as possible. So you can add as many different types of seats to this list as you want. So we can have a whole variety of seats. Uh, maybe some seats are mo more luxurious than others and maybe an upsell, uh, but still dispersed throughout. So another thing to pay attention to are the settings here on the left-hand side. Um, your section information, you can add a name to section, you can number your seats. Notice how on the fly it's actually giving us a, a quick uh, view of what that information is going to look like. Um, you can set limits. Uh, you can limit the number of seats per row. Let's say, for example, there's going to be a front of house in rows, uh, you know, six and eight or between six and eight. Then you can limit the number of seats there or maybe even, uh, you know, create an aisle or something like that using these limits. Um, you can change the rows per section, total seats, et cetera. So uh, really powerful. You can uh, get into the nitty gritty with all of your seat uh, section settings. But as you notice, we have not gone back to the design layer yet. In fact, this technically hasn't even created the seating section. So right now we still have a polygon in the background. Really cool, this slider here, we can change the seating angle on the fly. So this is manipulating your focus point. Uh, that, that focus point that we clicked at first that was on the center of the stage, this is actually moving that focus point as you adjust the angle, so keep that in mind. Uh, but a nice way to add a little bit of flair to your seating layout and uh, maybe you have a specific angle of view that you need for uh, you know, house left or house right, so keep that in mind. Um, so, and one more thing about the seating layout is you have the ability to assign classes. I know this is a hot topic for a lot of you folks in the entertainment industry is there's not really any class standards across um, all the other folks that you work with. So you have the ability to park certain objects into your own classes and define it as you wish. Right now they're all assigned to the seating section class. But if you want, let's say for example, the, the text for the seat, the row and the seat number to appear on a different class, you have the ability to do that. You can change that to a um, annotation class or anything specific to your workflow. So something to keep in mind, I'm gonna take the risk of actually creating this seating section and um, we will see what happens. Hopefully I don't get a crash. Hey, that was actually really quick. So we have a seating section with multiple types of seats. I'm gonna go into flyover view here and we have multiple symbols there with the seating section. Lots of different ways that you can edit this and use this in your event design. So I know we're running really short on time here. It's been a pleasure to share all of these features with you. Now, of course, there are a multitude of other features we have not had the chance to get to. So today we did cover multiple drawing views. We covered live section and elevation editing. We, we covered some of the enhanced features of the resource manager and uh, streamline report generation. There's a lot more to the worksheets and uh, that, you know, worksheets are actually a little bit more fun to use, dare I use that term, but uh, more fun than they were in 2017, I would say. And the enhanced seating section command as we've just looked at. 
Now there's more to come for sure. A lot more updates uh, to the Maxon Center Render, Enhanced Web View Export, New Rendered Panoramas, Braceworks, Improved Cloud Services, Updates to Vectorworks, Vision, and a lot of things in the background. So they do upgrade things in the background for more stability, more features that we don't always get to feature. But one thing I do want to outline is our colleague, Jonathan Pickup, also a very uh, common guest here on Novedge, on January the 10th, 2018, yes, next year, but only in a few weeks, he's gonna be talking about the tidal block border, and it's a Q&A. So if you got any questions, you've been getting in there and tinkering with the tidal block border, save your questions for him on January the 10th. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to if there's any Q&A we've got for this uh, short webinar we've had today. Yes, Jacob, thank you. There is a question. In seating okay. arrangements, can you specify a row or a position for alternative seats, like the first row is VIP, balances other, or a 72-inch in, table in the middle of a number of 60-inch table? That is a really specific question and a very uh, a great question. I, I can't say that I have the um, exact answer for that, but I don't know that it's that robust. That would be a really great feature. Uh, I, I think that you're gonna have to kind of tinker with it to make it work. Uh, that's my best answer to that. Okay, okay. Um, there's no other questions so far, but I'm still uh, willing to wait a few minutes. In the meantime, I will uh, uh, take the screen back. So we can say our um, goodbyes and conclude this webinar by um, thanking everybody who attended today and also reminding you where you can find Spotlight on uh, the Novage uh, webpage. Um, and uh, also I'm going to remind you for, for the next nine days, we have a 25% discount on new licenses, upgrades, uh, work service select so check it out and you might find a product that you really weren't thinking about getting and now you might be um, actually uh, tickled to get because uh, it's it's a great offer so um, this also is the announcement for a future webinar on uh, V-Ray for uh, SketchUp coming up with the new year. And also like uh, Jacob mentioned, we're gonna have a Q&A with Jonathan Pickup on January 10th. So um, check out our Novage webinar page on our website and you can see the lineup of all the future's webinars. And um, you can also follow us on Facebook, Google Plus or Twitter where we announce this webinar constantly. And uh, I'm recording this episode, so if you wanna rewatch it, you can also uh, go on Novage YouTube or Vimeo page. Just search for the word Novage. I don't see any other question, Jacob, so um, let's leave it at that. Thank you so much today for a great overview of Spotlight 2018 and especially great user tips. I hope you guys um, will be able to apply um, Jacob's useful tips. Thank you so much for joining us today um, from the other end of the world, Jacob. And um, Thank you, Barbara, and, and thanks to everybody for joining us today as well. I, I want to wish everybody happy holidays and safe travels with their family. Fantastic. Have a wonderful rest of the day, everybody, and see you on, uh, all on January 10th. Bye-bye. Thank you.